In 2017, I was about a year into making music when I finally decided it was time to send my music out via email and DMs to people. One of the contacts I found via Instagram was an email for a representative of Bangladesh Music Group uh, that was run by the legendary producer himself, Bangladesh, who was responsible for hits with Lil Wayne, Rihanna, Beyonce, a ton of people. Someone I was very familiar with from my childhood uh, as a music fan. I decided to shoot my shot and send four or five different instrumentals over as well as a brief paragraph just describing who I was, where I was from, uh, and the type of music that I made. I believe I sent the email probably in June, maybe late June, somewhere in there. Uh, a few weeks went by, didn't hear anything. Uh, and then mid to late July, I finally got word back that the representative had played my beats for Bangladesh himself. Uh, and that they both really enjoyed my sound and that they wanted to get in touch and have a phone call. He also said they were in search of different producers to help out with a new artist they had just signed who was working on her debut project. So you gotta imagine, you know, I'm just turned 20 years old, only a year into making music, and to be able to get that email back from someone that's so renowned and someone that I know from being a fan, you know, this is a huge opportunity and I'm just super excited. The main problem, however, was that in the email, he gave me a set date and time when they wanted to do the phone call, which also so happened to be a time where I'd be at my day job. Being the fact that it was such a big opportunity though, I did not want to, you know, say, let's do this at a later time or I can't do it, I'm not available. I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity because I didn't know if it would come again. So I just agreed. I was like, absolutely, I'll be available. Didn't even know how I was gonna go about this or what the time and the setting would be during the day. I was hoping that I would be completely free. As unideal as the situation was, I remember when the day showed up, uh, probably around two or 3 p.m., I secluded myself in the back room. I was awaiting the call. Then I saw the number, like an Atlanta, Georgia number pop up. So I picked it up, heard the representative, and he said, I have Bangladesh here in the room. And I heard Bangladesh. You know, we just started talking, um, you know, they wanted to know kind of my influences, who I was a fan of, how I created my sounds, things like that. And um, they both just said they were a big fan of what I was doing. I want to say the call lasted for about 10 to 15 minutes. Again, I was trying to keep it brief and also keep my voice down so no one like heard what I was doing on the job. Um, but basically at the end of the call, they said, you know, send more material. We're gonna get these sessions going soon with our artist. Um, we're gonna start playing her your stuff as well as some other producers. And we're gonna stay in touch and see what we can do. This is where the story kind of takes a weird turn because it was one of my first instances where I expected something to happen pretty immediately after that. And it did not go that way. Basically a few days turned into a few weeks, turned into a few months, um, even followed up with them and just didn't hear back. As it stands today, nothing has ever come out of that connection initially. I haven't heard back from the representative still or Bangladesh, believe it or not. I know that might sound like a sad ending, um, but I think more importantly, I learned a couple things during that experience. The first thing was that, you know, one particular instance doesn't make your whole career and relying on big breaks in general doesn't make you know, what you do matter. Um, it's a long-term thing. You gotta set yourself up to be ready for opportunities as they come. And you also have to create opportunities, which is something I didn't quite understand at that time. I was still reliant on, you know, hopefully someone signs me, finds me, gives me this big opportunity, does all the work for me. That was really my attitude at that time. The second thing I learned was that you do miss 100% of the shots that you never take. So in other words, if I would have never sent that email, reached out to begin with, the opportunity would have never even been presented to me. And it made me realize that, you know, continuing to reach out, even when you get rejected or even when you don't hear back or the opportunity might not work out, um, it doesn't matter. You should still do it because you're setting yourself up to see those wins in the future. I think, you know, keeping both those things in mind, even today is something that keeps me going, uh, keeps me focused on my journey and my music and just my whole career in general and really puts things into perspective from, you know, the way I used to look at things 
to the way my mindset has shifted now. At the end of the day, I'm happy that I had that experience and you know, you never know. The way that I've seen it play out is that things can always come back full circle. So I'm never gonna close the door completely on that opportunity. And if it ever does come back, you know, I think I'll be a lot more prepared this time.